Hey there, Spinners and Sharks, Ace of Vegas here, and I hope you're doing well. So now that Circa is the crown jewel of the Fremont Street experience, and all the executives and high rollers for that matter, what happened to Derek Stevens' other flagship hotel? Let's take a look at the D Las Vegas in 2021. Is the Ace of Vegas, the Ace of Vegas. So the hotel in of itself is pretty manageable. It's about the right size for downtown property, hosting some 630 rooms in the hotel portion, and about 42,000 square feet of gaming space in the casino. The casino itself is laid out between two floors and features dancing table dealers, for those of you so inclined. It doesn't seem to affect the way the table games are played, and Blackjack still pays out 3-2, so that's a victory there. Also, they have the Sigma Derby game upstairs, so there's some extra points for that. All right, I think we won that one, guys! And of course, there are hundreds of slot machines to play. The rest of the hotel is pretty standard. During my visit, I was immediately offered a room upgrade without any effort on my part. So that was pretty awesome. On the whole, the rooms are actually pretty standard for what you get downtown. Strong for downtown rooms in general, but they won't compete with most high-end rooms on the Strip. It looks about on par with something that you'd get at Park MGM on a basic level, but the artwork is just better. While there aren't too many additional amenities, what the D does have is pretty solid. They do offer in-room massage, which is a nice feature to have that's missing from most other hotels. They also feature a fitness center, but that's not really a thing for me while I'm in Vegas, but it's just a nice to have option. And they have a pool too, but yeah, it's not promoted very well. As to why, we'll come back to that in a minute. The property is pretty well balanced when it comes down to dining options, featuring several bars and restaurants on property, despite being smaller than most strip properties. Indoor and outdoor bars are covered, the obligatory Las Vegas steakhouse, a small cafe, and a favorite spot of mine, the Coney Island hot dog stand. Aside from an amazing pizza, nothing beats a 3am chili dog, so that's always a win. My favorite parts of the D are this. Number one, the casino is high energy and a lot more fair than the ones on the Strip. Even budget hotels on the Strip usually have 6-5 blackjack, whereas downtown you can actually enjoy proper 3-2 blackjack. The table minimums aren't bad, and the slot machines are a bit looser too. And frankly, the comps you get offered are a lot more generous than what you get on the Strip. I also love the Andiamo Steakhouse. It's got a classic, old-school Las Vegas vibe that's good for hanging out with friends or even someone special. And of course the food is pretty awesome too. The nightlife is sufficient. I do love Bar Canada because the drinks are creative and there's plenty of space to sit down and relax. It also doesn't hurt that the D-Bar outside is right on the Fremont Street experience so you can get your party on before you come in. And frankly, the location is pretty good. Granted, there aren't a lot of bad spots to be on Fremont Street, but the D is smack dab in the middle of downtown Fremont and the stage is right outside the front doors if you want to enjoy a show straight away. And now for the bad news. First off, the rooms aren't anything to write home about, at least not the basic ones. They're functional, but utilitarian, so you'll find yourself spending less time in the room and more time in the casino by default. Your average weekday rate should fall around $50 a night, whereas the average weekend night is usually a little closer to $150, plus the $30 resort fee. So the D is competitive with high-end locals casinos when it comes down to that. Though the comps are flexible, so they get points back for that, I don't think I've had to pay for a stay yet at the D. Also, the property's size is a bit limiting. It reduces the amount of amenities you can have, as well as the dining options. It is certainly not an all-in-one resort, and it's catered to a much more core Vegas experience without any additional bells or whistles. So while, while the limitation is understandable, it's still a bit disappointing. And finally, the pool is an afterthought at best. It was closed the last time I went, and taking a look at it, I can see why. Even at 100% capacity with no social distancing, it wouldn't hold too many people, and it just isn't memorable. A mitigating factor to this is that guests of the D get two complimentary pool passes a day to the stadium swim down the block. It's a bit of a walk, but having been to stadium swim, I'm fine going the extra block for a pool that's superior by orders of magnitude. Ultimately, the D is a pretty solid mid-level hotel. It's not without its problems, and it certainly fits the bill of a three-star property. But management and staff seem to be very aware of the issues and have policies in place that mitigate most of them. And the little bit of extra effort is all I need for that. I honestly can't recommend the D to anyone who's looking for an all-inclusive resort experience. This is not the hotel casino for that, and if you try to make it that, you're going to be very disappointed. But if you want a proper, classic Vegas trip, the D might be a good pick for you down on Fremont Street.
Overall, it earns a 4 out of 5. Alright there, Spinners and Sharks, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed today's episode and found it informative, I'd appreciate a like. And consider subscribing if you haven't already. When is your next trip down to the D Las Vegas? Are you planning to stay in the hotel or just play in the casino? Whatever your thoughts may be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. Until next time though, this is Ace of Vegas signing out and I'm wishing you strong hands and, of course, happy spinning you guys. Viva Las Vegas Viva Las Vegas Viva Las Vegas